not only beautiful music, but how wonderful to see your stained glass windows, which I'm sure for those of you who haven't been able to be in the building uh, was especially meaningful today. So thank you for sharing those because I haven't seen them all. They're really very beautiful. Now let's prepare our hearts and minds for worship as we confess our sin and receive God's merciful forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the keeper of the covenant, steadfast love, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. God hears us when we cry and draws us close in Jesus Christ. Let us return to the one who is full of compassion. Fountain of living water, pour out your mercy over us. Our sin is heavy and we long to be free. Rebuild what we have ruined and mend what we have torn. Wash us in your cleansing flood. Make us alive in the spirit to follow in the way of Jesus as healers and restorers of the world you so love. Amen. Beloved, God's word never fails. The promise rests on grace by the saving love of Jesus Christ, the wisdom and power of God. Your sins are forgiven and God remembers them no more. Journey in the way of Jesus. Amen.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Oh God, by the passion of your blessed son, you made an instrument of shameful death to be for us the means of life. Grant us so to glory in the cross of Christ that we may gladly suffer shame and loss for the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, our savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Marjorie, you're muted. Okay. <laughs> when Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty. Walk before me and be blameless, and I will make my covenant between me and you and will make you exceedingly numerous. When Abram fell on his face, and God said to him, as for me, this is my covenant with you. You shall be the ancestor of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be Abram, but your name shall be Abraham. For I have made you the ancestor of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings shall come from you. I will establish my covenant between me and you, and your offspring after you throughout their generations, for an everlasting covenant, to be God to you and to your offspring after you. God said to Abraham, as for Sarai, your wife, you shall not call her Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. I will bless her, and moreover, I will give you a son by her. I will bless her, and she shall give rise to nations. Kings of peoples shall come from her. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm will be read responsively. You who fear the Lord, give praise. All you of Jacob's line, give glory. Stand in awe of the Lord, all you offspring of Israel. Where the Lord does not despise, nor afford the poor in their poverty. 
neither is the Lord's face hidden from them. But when they cry out, the Lord bears them, hears them. From you comes my praise in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the sight of those who fear the Lord. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Let those who seek the Lord give praise. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. All the families of nations shall bow before God. For dominion belongs to the Lord who rules over the nations. Indeed, all who sleep in the earth shall bow down in worship. All who go down to the dust, though they be dead, shall kneel before the Lord. Their descendants shall serve the Lord, whom they shall proclaim to generations to come. They shall proclaim God's deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying to them, the Lord has acted. The second reading is from Romans. The promise that he would inherit the world did not come to Abraham or to his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. It is the adherents of the law who are to be their heirs. Faith is no and the promise is void. Where the law brings wrath, but where there is no law, neither is there violation. For this reason, it depends on faith in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his descendants, not only to the adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham. For he is the father of all of us, as it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. In the presence of the God in whom he believes, he gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. Hoping against hope, he believed that he would become the father of many nations, according to what was said. So numerous shall your descendants be. He did not weaken in faith when he considered his own body, which was already as good as dead, for he was about a hundred years old. Or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb, no distrust made him, made him waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God, being fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. Therefore, his faith was reckoned to him as righteousness. Now the words, it was reckoned to him, were written not for his sake alone, but for ours also. It will be reckoned to us who believe in him, who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was handed over to death for our trespasses and was raised for our justification. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel. Oh, I'm sorry. My mistake, you, uh, we have a gospel acclamation. I started too soon. I'm sorry, I thought it was musical. <laughs> Somebody let me know if, if not. Yeah, there's no, no music, Natalie, sorry. Okay, I'm sorry. So we do in this time of Lent, glory and praise to you, O Lord Jesus Christ. The Holy <laughs> Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, 
the chief priests and the scribes and be killed and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, if any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I invite you to pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So ever since my first grandchild was born five weeks ago, I've been thinking a lot about what I want to pass on to my granddaughter. My husband's paternal grandparents emigrated with their families from Sweden to the United States in the 1920s and became members of Emanuel Lutheran Church in Hartford. His maternal grandparents' families did the same about 20 years later. All four of his grandparents were confirmed at Emanuel and later married at Emanuel. Their children, my husband's mother and father, were baptized, attended Sunday school, confirmed, and were married at Emanuel. Their two sons are lifelong members of Emmanuel, which is where I met my husband after moving to Connecticut and where we were married and raised two daughters, both of whom have remained active in the congregation and our youngest was married at Emmanuel in 2018. And now my granddaughter, the first great, 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 great grandchild of those immigrants has arrived. That's five generations of family and lots of memories connected to one church. As I reflect on what I want to pass on to my granddaughter, the next generation, my clear response is to nurture the faith that will be given to her in baptism. Baptism, God's unconditional covenant with us where we are claimed and named, receiving our identity as God's beloved children marked with the cross of Christ, promised forgiveness of sin, and life everlasting with God. Lent is a time of, for renewal of our baptismal covenant. Last week, we heard of God's covenant with Noah and the animals, and today, the second Sunday in Lent, we hear of God's covenant with Abram and Sarai. Last week's rainbow was a sign to remind God of God's promise that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood. In today's story, circumcision is a sign to remind both God and man of the covenant that God established with Abram. And we are reminded that as we emerge from the waters of baptism, we are marked by the sign of the cross on our foreheads. By faith, we join in God's covenant which calls us to follow Christ to the cross and into resurrection. Abram's story began when God called him to leave his father's house and go to a land that God would show him. It was almost as if, as though God had a why statement for Abram in Genesis 12, as God promised that God would make of Abram a great nation and bless him and make his name great so that he would be a blessing. At this point in faith's discernment journey, some of you may relate to the fear and confusion and grief Abram must have felt at the prospect of leaving the comfort of all he knew. 
In today's reading, God expands on the covenant promise that God had spoken to Abram nearly 25 years before, promising that Abram would not just be the father of a great nation, but of a multitude of nations. Abram's faith that Paul tells us was reckoned to him as righteousness notwithstanding, there were plenty of highs and lows in Abram's and Sarai's journey over the course of those 25 years, including feeling the need to take matters into their own hands instead of holding on to trust in God. Abram was 86 years old when at Sarai's suggestion, her handmaiden Hagar became concub concubine to Abram and his son Ishmael was born. 25 years later, Abram believes and despairs that his heir is to be the son of a slave. Although God reminds Abram of God's promise, with Abram 99 years old and Sarai 90 years old, the idea of having children together is so preposterous that in verse 17, after the end of today's reading, Abram laughs out loud at God's suggestion. Yet, God is certain. Through the stories in the Bible, and even through the anxieties and fears in our hearts, we know that God is trustworthy. When we can't imagine what the future will look like, or how we can possibly live into what God is calling us to, God is still trustworthy and promises only good. There are a lot of voices anticipating the baptism of my granddaughter at Emmanuel, the fifth generation of Bloomquists. My daughter's friends who went through Sunday school and confirmation with her, her former Sunday school teachers, youth group mentors, all the members I was in relationship with as deacon and director of Christian education for 16 years, her grandma and the memory of her grandpa who died this past Monday. Yet, God may have other plans. You see, my daughter and son-in-law moved down toward the shore this summer, and they've come to realize that the distance will not be conducive to active engagement in the life and ministries of Emmanuel. And as I reflect on what I want to pass on to my granddaughter, I support the need for them to join a congregation closer to them and to begin their engagement in the life and ministries of a different congregation with Evelyn's entry into God's family in baptism not at Emmanuel, but at their new faith home. It won't be easy. New building, new pastor, new people, new traditions, customs, and ways of doing things. But what they can trust will, but, but what they can trust will be the, the same is God's commitment to God's covenant, which invites us into something new where we are called not to set our minds on human thoughts and desires, but on divine thoughts and desires, God's thoughts and desires, making possible the continued passing on of faith to future generations. To mark the significance of the promised blessing that would come through Abram and Sarai, God changed both of their names. Abram meaning the father is exalted to Abraham, meaning the father of a multitude. Sarai to Sarah, meaning princess because Sarah will be the mother of nations, including royalty. We receive a new identity and new name in baptism, God's beloved. God names us creatures in whom God delights, as precious, as utterly known and loved. We receive God's baptismal promise of resurrection life by faith. Just as Sarah and Abraham received new names as a sign of the covenant, your name, faith, is a reminder that you can trust God and know God has only good intentions for you. Even though they received new names and a new calling from God, both Abraham and Sarah retained the root of their original name. As God calls you into new identity, you will surely retain the root of your name, faith. Just as God did not ask Abraham and Sarah to simply leave behind their story and history, God does not ask you to leave behind your story and lived experience as Faith Lutheran Church. Instead, God meets you where you are, 
and will lead you into God's way of faithful living. Today, we come to the end of our six month covenant together. And on this, our last Sunday together, I want to share with you that I understand how difficult it has been to work toward discerning faith missional sustainability in these difficult times. But for much farther back than even five generations, God has been and will always be faithful. Even when we turn to ourselves instead of to God, God remains faithful, persisting in loving us as Jesus binds us to God through our baptism into his death. God's promise of salvation extends from generation to generation, even when loving and serving neighbor and sharing our faith so that others may feel love and acceptance may look different than what we had hoped or planned. I wanna thank you for sharing yourselves in your faith community with me, for opening yourselves to my tough questions and uncomfortable insights. I have known you to reflect honestly on how you want to be a part of God's call to move into God's future and nurture the faith of future generations of God's people. Faith Lutheran is indeed a community of deep faith, passionate wisdom and hope for the future. I look forward to being with all of you at the end of worship today to see if uh, I can answer questions and to have some really good open uh, conversation. You may be wondering what ideas that God might have about your future that you find preposterous. Do they make you laugh or cry? How do you see faith's future as part of God's covenant? And how do you support and sustain each other as you do this important yet hard work? God calls you to live into the name God has given you. To know our true name is as it was for Abraham and Sarah to turn, to reorient ourselves according to that name and to live it. Know that Jesus walks with you in this journey through the highs and the lows, through the joys and the sorrows, you have been named and claimed by God who will never leave you. Thanks be to God for this good news. Amen.
With the whole church, let us confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him, all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need. Your gift of grace is for all people. Give confident faith to all the baptized that they may follow you wholeheartedly. Give new believers joy in your promises Give hope and courage to those who suffer their faith. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. All the ends of the earth worship you. From galaxies to microorganisms, preserve your creation. Teach humanity to wonder at your works and to join you in tending to creation's well-being. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You rule over the nations. Raise up advocates for peace and justice within and between nations. Give life where hope seems dead. Call into existence new realities we cannot even imagine. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. In Jesus, you joined humanity in suffering and death. Reveal to all the depth of your love shown on the cross. Accompany all who suffer in body, mind, and spirit. Restore, restore all who are sick or grieving. Bring vindication for victims of justice, exploitation, injustice, exploitation, and oppression. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You made Abraham and Sarah the ancestors of a multitude of nations. Bless grandparents, parents, and foster parents, and the children who look to them for care and guidance. Console those who deal with infertility, parents who have entrusted their children to adoption, and children longing to be adopted. Equip ministries and services to families. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We await the day of Christ coming in glory. Lead us by the example of all the saints whom you have called to take up their cross and follow you, that together we may find our lives in you. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You guide, support, and love all your stewards in faith, Lord. We thank you for bringing Natalie to us in a time we needed guidance and discernment. May the work she started be the fuel we need to move faith into our next chapter. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O oh faithful God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Thank you. <laughs> Feel free, please, to share the peace with everybody. This is great seeing all these boxes. <laughs> peace, 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 And at this time, we remember all the ministries of faith and of the Greater Lutheran Church. Let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive this blessing. You are what God made you to be, created in Christ Jesus for good works, chosen as holy and beloved, freed to serve your neighbor. God bless you that you may be a blessing in the name of the holy and life-giving Trinity. Amen.
Go in peace, share the good news. Thanks be to God. And I hope you're all gonna stay <laughs> for questions. Um, 